Welcome to Glenda Blasts Your Ear Off, flash fiction stories written by Josh Bush and narrated by Glenda Villamar. Enjoy! You have 1,440 minutes in a day. Use five of those minutes and visit freerice.com to play trivia games and help end world hunger. Freerice.com We have news. Glenda Blasts Your Ear Off has an ebook. Our writer, Josh Bush, has compiled the written stories of our first 10 episodes, available for sale on lulu.com. Episode 11, Hamster. I signed up for a 10-year reconnaissance circuit for the military. It was in the far reaches of the galaxy, where people hadn't gotten around to settling yet. The military wanted a patrol there to watch out for aliens. Not that humans in 13,000 years of space exploration had ever encountered aliens, but I didn't care if the mission was pointless or not. What I cared about was that the paycheck would enable me to retire early and live quite comfortably. So it was me. I'm Nikki, by the way. And Charlie. Just the two of us together for 10 years in a ship with two bedrooms, a bathroom, a kitchen, the cockpit, and the cargo hold. And every year that went by, the ship seemed to get smaller and smaller. The only thing that kept me going was my eternal love of my hamster, Mr. Furrybelly III. And the worst part was that Mr. Furrybelly III wasn't even traveling with us, due to the very real concern over having enough air to breathe, or not, which meant we couldn't bring a pet on our 10-year circuit. Back home on Mars, Mr. Furry Belly III was in suspended animation. He was kept in an artificial sleep coma that would keep him alive without aging until my return. I felt guilty to hit the pause button on my furry little fella, my love, my number one guy. I mean, who did I think I was to say his life must go on hold until I return to be with him? But it was just the way it had to be until we could be together again. Mr. Furry Belly the Third's hamster wheel workout sessions would have to wait. Sometimes I swear I hear his hamster wheel squeaking away as he runs his heart out on his wheel, and my heart leaps with joy. But then I remember that Mr. Furry Belly isn't on the ship with me, that he's on Mars asleep. I miss you, my Mr. Man. Oh, what I wouldn't give to rub your little belly with my nose. We had just one year left before we completed our circuit, when Charlie lost her mind. She had always been a little weird, which I found to be entertaining, but year nine of the circuit was a brand new ball of wax, even for her. Charlie started doing what she called pranks. She mixed the air incorrectly to get high, and it got both of us high. After I finally managed to fix the air mixture, Charlie (laughs) laughed and laughed. Charlie's next stunt was to lock me in my room, and she played Rocket Man by Elton John nonstop for three days straight. I can still hear the song in my head. I fear it'll be burned there forever. I miss the earth so much. I miss my wife. It's lonely out in space on such a timeless flight. Next, she refused to wear clothes for a month. After that, Charlie talked and walked like a bear for a week. She had even managed to cobble together a bear suit. I'm not the man they think I am at home, and I think it's gonna be a long, long time. Charlie rigged the treadmill to go 100 miles per hour, so when an unsuspecting me got on the treadmill, I got banged up pretty good. So much so that I got knocked out. And when I came to, let's just say, Charlie had the presence of mind to be very apologetic. Not that she had a mind left. The next bonehead move that Charlie thought it would be fun to do was to go into an asteroid belt and steer the ship as close as she could to an asteroid without hitting it. Which worked, until it didn't. The repairs took weeks and weeks. Charlie apologized over and over promised she'd behave from then on, yeah, right. Shortly after fixing the ship, once again, Charlie started playing chicken with asteroids. Some people never learn. I know I don't. I should have done something to prevent her from being able to pilot the ship 
But what was I supposed to do? Tie her up for a year in her room? Oh no, I can hear Elton again. I'm not the man they think I am at home. And I think it's gonna be a long, long time. Charlie smashed the ship against an asteroid. Alarms were going off, nothing was working, the hallways were bent. Charlie was dead in the pilot's chair. Poor Charlie. I got in the escape pod and I started crying because I didn't know if I would ever get to see Mr. Furry Belly the Third again. Will someone wake him up from suspended animation and love him as much as I do? Will he wonder where I am? Will my little furrykins think I abandoned him and that I don't love him anymore? I don't know how much time had passed, but when I woke up, I could see out the escape pod window that I was inside another spaceship. The tech inside it was all wrong. It wasn't made from any tech that humans had come up with. I got out of the escape pod, and the first thing I noticed was that I could breathe in the atmosphere of the ship I'd somehow found myself in. I turned when I heard something. It was an alien. I started screaming because it didn't make any sense. It didn't look human at all. It was like looking at a pile of spaghetti that was burning in a campfire. It grabbed me, picked me up, and started going further into the ship, away from my escape pod. And I wished with all my might I could pet Mr. Furry Belly the Third and have his nose nuzzle my cheek. Then there was another alien. I swear to you, I'll never eat spaghetti again. The two of them whined and roared and gurgled at one another in what I assume was their language. Then we were on the move again. The second campfire alien was still with us. How many of these nightmares were on this ship of theirs? How big was it? And what did they even want with me? We stopped moving. I was in front of what looked like a hamster wheel. I was put inside and they closed the door on me. Then I heard a noise like someone was trying to find a channel on an FM radio. And then I heard English. My friend here thinks you look delicious, but then again, she thinks everything looks delicious. I can't keep her out of the kitchen. I constantly have to shoo her away. I stammered, so you won't let her eat me? No one is going to eat you. Now get that out of your head right now. We're going to take you home. We're going to reunite you with Mr. Furry Belly the Third. I squealed. You will? I didn't even care how these things knew these things. I was going to get to see my furrykins after all. Yes, but we need your help to do it. Our engines need the help. We need you to walk in this hamster wheel to help make the ship go. Can you do that? I walked forward and the hamster wheel moved. Sure, I could do this. Good, easy as cheese. Now keep this up for a week or two and we'll be at Mars in no time. And before you ask, yes, you can take breaks and eat and sleep, etc. You want to thank us? Yes, yes, our pleasure. Now, to help pass the time, would you want to hear some music? How about some Elton John? Just kidding. And when we get to Mars, I really must try the spaghetti you keep thinking about. The end. Thank you for listening to today's episode. We look forward to bringing you the next episode in Glenda Blasts Your Ear Off. And now for a teaser from a podcast I enjoy listening to called Buttered Feet. What's your like favourite book ever? Asked Aidan, finishing the remnants of his knobbly bobbly. Where's Wally Six? The Great Picture Hunt? Is that the one with Oddlaw's picture pandemonium? Yeah. Well, solid page. Sick book. Aidan wondered whether Beth was also hoping they'd make Where's Wally into a Netflix series, but he forgot to say as he got distracted by two seagulls pecking at an empty box of Weetos. Bad luck, lads, said Aidan. Wally and Waldo, asked Beth. Is that their names? replied Aidan, referring to the seagulls. Yeah.